and five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Carol Stay. She. That chick angel. Welcome to another podcast banger, episode. Banger, smash banger, that like banger, button. Banger, smash banger, that banger, notification banger, button. Banger, 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 banger. All 2024. Welcome. One. We welcome you once. Welcome you twice. Welcome to the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Heard that in a minute. Welcome Christ. Jesus Christ. Huh? Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. All right. He's still doing that, guys. He is. He is. He's still out here. He's still. I would be. Yes. What? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, so before we get into the Wendy Williams of it all and the rest of the topics, we got we we would be remiss if we didn't wax poetically on our on our all three of us attending the NAACP Image Awards luncheon. Quick funny story before we get into Angel and Josh's. <laughs> I can't wait. I was hoping you were gonna tell the story. <laughs> Absolutely go Please tell it. Please do, sir. Quick funny story. I got to stop. I either think way too highly of myself or not highly of myself I at need all. You to always be in that hand. Too highly? Yes. Because it ends up with boy, way better stories. Way better stories. And it's also safer. Yeah. Not highly enough is when I'm not understanding who I am. underbidding yourself. But this time I was way too highly. Mm-hmm. I run into Derek Johnson at the Essence. And if you don't know who he is, he's the president of the NAACP. Beep. President of the NAACP. He pulls me aside. He's like, Kev, man, you know what? We love what you, you know, everything you're doing. We'd love for you to hold the, host the awards. Um, one of the award shows. And I'm like, of course, hit me up, hit me up. So they reached out to me to host the Image Awards luncheon, and I did. Quick aside, I had to be there at 7.30. That yeah. thing didn't start till 12. I, I know. They be having early call times. Early call time. The yeah. people who were on sets call time was six. six. I know, yeah. And some, so the person who was handling me, she was there at 5.20. Mm-hmm. The sun ain't even at work yet. No. So anyway, <laughs> so I host the award show, Have a Great Time, in the middle of 8.47. Marquita Bradley, who's a friend of the pod, great friend of Angel. She a Delta? Yeah, of course. She's my Delta. Soul. She's an outstanding producer. If you liked coming to the stage, the reason you liked it was because Marquita Bradley pulled amazing questions. That's why I will not do that show again without her or somebody like her because she was the reason I had good questions. She comes over in the room and she's prepping me and she got on a headset and stuff like that. And she's talking to me. And I, in the moment she's talking, this whole time I was thinking that I was hosting the awards dinner. Mm-hmm. That's that what, I got my award from, and they just threw the luncheon in the awards dinner. Bless you, bless you. last year. Bless, bless you. you. Thank One you. more in your clout chasing. I know. I Josh, love, that was that a clip. great meme. So the awards dinner had Angela Bassett, Tanak Huerta, mm-hmm. uh, Sam Jackson was there. Method Man was at my table. Uh, Brisha's Web hosted it last she year. She was the host last year. Brisha's Web. So I'm like, okay, they going from Brisha to me. That's kind of crazy because Brisha is a legit television and movie star. Mm-hmm. For me, it's a downgrade in visibility, <laughs> but I'm saying host-wise, we can have a good time. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy Brisha tremendously. Mm-hmm. Beverly Uggams, funny. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, and after a while, I'm like, man, they they hit me about the luncheon early. Yeah, I wonder when they go hit me about the awards because it's, it's go, coming up it's in a couple of weeks, up. give or take a couple of weeks. Yeah, like I got my suit ready. I'm just kind of like curious about when we're gonna start going over stuff. Uh huh. It dawned on me at eight seventeen. Bless it. I yeah. said, hold up. Bless it. Oh, the the thing they wanted me to host, I it's happening. You're I am here. hosting it. Yes. The awards dinner is some somebody else hosted. So I asked Marquita, I said, uh <gasps> I said, hey, it just dawned on me that they uh all they wanted me to do was host not all, but I thought it was plus more. I, they wanted me to host the luncheon only. She was like, Yeah, what what did you think? I didn't I didn't think they wanted me to host the, the awards dinner where Sam Jack was gonna be there. Mm-hmm. I had jokes ready. Oh, did you? <laughs> you now? Angel, you I had see. a band hired in my mind. Oh, you thought you were able to do that. I, well, Brisha had a band. But the, she she didn't hire them. I was gonna be like, they probably ain't gonna pay, but I'll pay. <laughs> so I said <laughs> You can't you thought you were gonna tell them what band they were gonna hire for you. Well, you, I'm gotta, the host. you gotta start clearing that what sync you licensing. You gotta is, wait a minute, is that what you think? Because you're the host that you could pick you, out what, the band. What are you gonna Adam Blackstone. I want Adam Blackstone who Adam Blackstone's who, in the butt. Oh, I love it. Adam Blackstone's in the butt. He emptied the Super Bowl the last three years. I who love else can I pay get? Adam Blackstone out of pocket? Yes. Jeez. Within reason. That is so funny that you thought you would even have that say. I love it. Please continue well, this, this is, journey. I'm thinking highly of myself. <laughs> Come on. Come so, on. I already had bits I was working out. Uh-huh. Because those are very hard things to host. The luncheon is hard. The awards dinners are hard. 
it's very hard. So you were just going to work with their writer and be like, this place, this joke right here in the script, because I'm going to go into that. Absolutely. Okay, please continue. I love this. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Wouldn't have it any other way. Of course. So I'm talking to Marquita. I'm like, um, they just wanted me to host a lunch. And she was like, yeah, yeah. She's like, what'd you think? I was like, I thought they wanted me to host this and the awards dinner. She said, oh. <laughs> Do we know who's hosting the awards dinner? Uh, she does. Yeah, oh, she knows. Oh. So, no, I didn't she know, produces I didn't both. I know if it was NDA, NDA. No, no, no. She, she does. She just didn't tell me. So I'm like, so do y'all know the host already? She was like, yes, Kevin. It's it's in like two weeks. We know who's hosting. So does Derek know? Because he pulled me aside at Essence. She was like, yes, he pulled you aside for this. For this. Where you currently are hosting. Yeah. You lunch boy. <laughs> she didn't say that, but the city was, you lunching. And it was a gospel lunch. Perfect for me. Yeah. But it could be a trap brunch and I could still host the dinner. So long Marquita story said, short. Oh, the host the host of the dinner's great time. He asked for Adam Blackstone. He's gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> long story short. Uh they're going with another name. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I got hey, there's level. Cause in twenty twenty, I was hosting the red carpet. Yeah, you were. Twenty twenty three, I was winning. Twenty four, yeah. I, I hosted lunch. Yeah. The only logical step. Eventually, the award show. We, we, now I got to skip past the, the yeah, you're dinner. You're going straight to the award show. I got to skip straight to the, who they have last year? Anthony Anderson? It's going to be Kev, Kev on stage. stage. I got churches out it? in the world. The Kev's jokes. <laughs> yeah. That, that, I'll let you license that for free. <laughs> listen, listen, though. Listen. This is my friend, Kevin. I want y'all to see what he looked like halfway through. First of all, I thought it was hilarious. I, I felt for Nina because I turned around and looked at the teleprompter. I said, this man is not saying anything on this teleprompter. And she's having to bring them back to script multiple times. Kevin, when Kevin has a joke on his mind, he does not care about what the plan was. Joke is going to get let off. It's going to, he's going to sling that joke. And I, because as soon as you started into a joke, I was like, I turned back around to see the Don't thing. read that's on there. You, oh, fo you oh, face no. front. Because I'm watching Nina looking and nodding, looking and nodding. And I'm like, that's the look and the nod of when are we going to get back to what we're supposed to be saying? <laughs> this, he did this multiple times. And that's why I'm hosting that lunch. <laughs> Listen, but this is, this is, yes, because you can't do that for the TV. They need to know what's going to come out your mouth. <laughs> but this is him when they're naming, okay, so the way the lunch in goes is that there is a, a like curated things, performers, there's speeches from the, the president, from the um, uh, vice president, and um, games before they start just listing off all the nominees that are in the building. This is Kevin. <laughs> well, let me show y'all. Josh, we're going to go to the wide. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. No. Marcus sent me this video, by the way. Okay. So, Mind you, Angel has the best seat in the house. Oh, we're going to get into that, y'all, because this is crazy. I'm just saying for their point of view oh, yeah, I can of the stage. Oh, of the stage. So this is a part of the setup of the stage that I am leaning on. <laughs> okay for best comedy <laughs> Abbott Elementary all right fantastic okay child please for outstanding lifestyle self-help podcast Ke I, Kevin is quite literally leaning on the set. You can't see Angel's foot. His foot, he had his feet <laughs> turned. <laughs> let me tell you. What? Like this. He wasn't even standing on the sole of his own feet. Hold on, I got, I got the video. Because let me tell you though, I was in my hard bottoms and I didn't have my <laughs> insole in. And I wasn't able to sit down, and my heels was on fire. I told you can't them, do that on the TV show. You can't. Well, there do it was on the nowhere for show. me to hide, and my plantar fasciitis was fasciitis. Then play you got to pretend. <laughs> Is the video playing, Josh? <laughs> That's the lean he had. Because my foot was on fire. That was Kevin. So I, she's being funny. I was saying the names right, but the rest of my demeanor. I said all the names right. No, but it had more energy than that. I oh, was sorry. like, but the joke was funny. Okay, but. <laughs> It w so in my mind, in my mind, uh -huh. first of all, let me tell y'all, 
it was like 45 minutes there of us so reading. There were so many names. Yeah. There was like, there's a class photo. There's a, at least 200 people on the stage, it feels like. Yeah, it felt like a there lot. Was after, so they, like, after they read ours, I drove home, checked on the cats, came back, Kev was still reading. <laughs> yes. Dog, everything had to be read, right? And I was like, next time, when I host the next time, I want y'all to get somebody else to, to read, read the this. name. MC Light. Or let's just say congratulations to all y'all. You know who y'all were. Pick voice of God. Up. Tap the door. Because the door was done after the first 10 minutes. Yes. That was her voice. Yeah, she, every year, Kev. I said, that's, I thought it was MC Light, but I couldn't find her. The door <laughs> has a great voice. Nina, yes. on the other hand. Now, Nina, she professional all the way. She wasn't yeah. leaning on the wall. No, she wasn't. Oh I thought I was further back than I was. No, you were right there. She, we her see you voice very was well. perfect. My yes. sent material. me that video. I said, oh, my He God. said, look at this man. He said, Angel, look at Kevin. I <laughs> said, oh, no. He said, are you lucky I didn't, like, he said, I, I only caught what I seen. Like, I only recorded what I could catch. But what I saw. Oh, yeah. Big meet and greet energy. Oh yes, that's exactly what it was. The way I smile but for the I picture. I don't want to be here oh. no more. They, they oh. said Kev was on that stuff. I was on that zip. <laughs> on that. I zip. had been there since seven a.m. I know. I know. It, it was a long day. Two thirty by that time. Asia, well, Probably two thirty. Kev got caught up and had to talk to somebody. So then when he actually started eating his food, they're like, hey, uh, five, 10 more minutes, please. 10 more minutes. Oh, no. And then in three minutes, they're like, okay, we're ready for you to come back. And that I was, literally, and it got, I, I said, you said 10. It was like. Uh, eh, eh. Having in these conversations now. Uh, so let me, let me tell. Uh, Kevin, so somebody, hold on right? real quick. AC said, drink some coffee, Kev. I poured the coffee. They said, we got 10 minutes. I try to eat the food real quick. Mm -hmm. I poured the coffee. Mm -hmm. to, matter of fact, I ordered coffee earlier in the day. It never came. I'm sorry. Should have walked off like Kelly Rollins, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Um, so then I sat down to eat. I sat down and I make my cup of coffee during the 10 minute. Thing. I was there. Okay. Soon as I did my, you know how you get your coffee. And when you're done and set, you hit it with two tink, 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 tink. Uh -huh. Now you finna sit. Hit my wood with two tink. They Kevin, tapped come me. On. <laughs> I said. <laughs> they tink, tink you. They tink, tink me. Tink, 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 they said. And <laughs> that's when I went on and did the, uh, Graduation ceremony. Oh man, that would have felt like. You should have uh, just had your coffee up there too. With your I sh listen. <laughs> Next up, we have. <laughs> so I was so embarrassed when I seen that video because that at that point it's over. Mm -hmm. I've already Marcus showed me that at y'all party. Oh, he didn't show it to you. Oh yeah, he. I, it was. It was something. He else. was telling Chance about it. Yeah. And he showed me at the party. I said, Oh, oh no. I'm yeah. going back to red carpet. They bumping me. Down. <laughs> they were like, He can't. He don't have the uh, stamina. He ain't got the stamina to host that stamina. long. They bumping me back down the red carpet. And you got to wear tennis shoes with your next one. I would. We need whoever can They're, make a dress shoe with hard bottoms just that wear actually tennis people, shoes. people were at that thing in Jordan's case. You could have just wore tennis oh, shoes. Man, I was had a nice suit on. You did. It was fine. So me and Marcus show up. I had to get my dress altered because that thing was not about the zipping, honey. They, they were not. And then I didn't realize Marcus had tell me I needed to. He needed to pull my dress up from the back. So it was just just covering what had to be covered for censorship. Didn't know until I saw the pictures. I was like, that was supposed to be a way higher. <laughs> oh, well. We do. We finish the red carpet. They look at our tickets. Now, the way it works is that because I, I'm the one who submitted us for all the categories for here's the thing for is this going to cause an argument? Uh, well, those are only two I submitted for. I receive all the correspondence in the tickets. <clears throat> so they sent me all the tickets. I dispersed the tickets to the people. Josh came with his lovely girlfriend, uh, me and Marcus, and then um, our old producer of the podcast and our current assistant to help me get uh, content. So I don't even know if I dispersed the tickets right, but I hope I did. Mind okay? you, uh, quick note on dispersing the tickets, right? So we see our tickets. I'm like, oh, maybe she sent us the wrong ones because we had the names of our tickets were for the other people. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Angels for Hits. Uh, mm -hmm. Assistant and, and old producer of the podcast. So we're in the line for the red carpet. And I, I was like, oh, that's them. And I was like, wait, but. I was like, maybe she sent us, but I was like, oh, that's both of them. Yes. They're walking in. They're probably going to get green scanned if they have these tickets. I hope everything's going to be fine. It ended up being fine because I was like, worked out. yeah, I was like, oh, no, because they're y'all's had open seating because I would have uh, once I saw that they had names, which wasn't until I was actually walking into the event. Mm. I was like, oh, well, 
I need to have y'all switch. But then the people said, no, these are all open. The other tickets are all open yeah. seating. And I was like, oh, okay, so it doesn't matter. They were like, you all are at B18. And there was a woman who was like, I'll take you to your table. And I was like, okay, but I'm stopping talking because as y'all know, mm -hmm. 2018, 2019, I did the red carpet. Mm -hmm. So I knew a lot of the people who were working. So I was saying hi to them, like the mm -hmm. people who were actually working the event. So, but this woman is adamant about waiting for us to take us to the table. And I was just like, okay, because I'll read the table numbers. But she was just like, no, it's fine. I'll wait for you. I know when we think about financial planning, a lot of times we think about what our budget is, what our financial goals are for when we retire. But guess what else is a part of financial planning? Life insurance. Make life insurance a part of your financial planning this year. Start shopping now with Policy Genius to find the right policy to protect your family. Getting life insurance today means you'll have the peace of mind to know that if something were to happen to you, your family's expenses will be covered while they're getting back on their feet. Like things like mortgage payments, college uh, tuition, credit card payments. Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk you through it. I have life insurance that I got through Policy Genius. So did my husband and so did my mother. I had tried getting life insurance in the past independently and it was so overwhelming and I really didn't know who I could trust when they were coming in trying to give me quotes. I didn't know if they were giving me the type of policy that I actually wanted. With Policy Genius, they listened to what I actually wanted to be able to do for my family and were able to suggest what type of coverage I need, and then help me find the right type of company that will work best for me and what my goals were for my life insurance policy. Policy Genius technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers, and it doesn't take nothing but a few clicks, and you'll find your lowest price. And even if you already have a life insurance policy from your job, chances are it does not give you enough money, okay? And it doesn't follow you once you leave the job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some of the options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to, incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. No wonder they have thousands of five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Save time and money and provide your family with a financial safety net using Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. So we're walking in. <laughs> we're walking in and she's walking us towards the front. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And then I see B19. If this is, if the camera is center, I see B19 is off to the right. And then B18 is center and in you, the very front. Everybody else had round wooden church tables. Yes. With, we, the, with the black blankets over them. Yes. We <laughs> were at a rectangular table, front, center, closest to the stage. She had an acrylic, glossy table. <laughs> yes. It had candles, lights, flowers on it that weren't matching any of the other tables on that no, one. And, and they said, yes, uh, so we, uh, your seats are at the president's table. And I said, hey, 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 Who's hey. the president, Angel? Listen, Derek Johnson, I knew who it was. I said, I need y'all to check y'all's paperwork. <laughs> I quite literally said that. When, my, when I saw Marquita, I said, hey, 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 check the paperwork. I don't know what's going on. She was like, this, this is not the part that Marquita does. Marquita produces what happens on stage. I was, she was like, if they said that you had B18, I was like, listen, now. Somebody check this because we're not about to sit down here and be asked to get up. It's be a be a problem. Right. And so David, who is over the, uh, uh, again, over like Marquita as executive producer of the event, he was like, listen, you're not the help no longer. Maybe somebody wanted you at that table. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> if that's what you say, listen, oh, everything wants to go. <laughs> then one of like the VP of strategy at the NAACP walks up to me. She introduces herself. She was like, yes, we wanted to have you at the uh, president's table. We just thank you for all your videos and for Dang. you know pushing the event. And I was like, okay. "Oh, that's okay." They, saw they those made lives. that on purpose, Angel. Yes, and I said, "Well, you all are welcome. We are so excited to be here." Me and Marcus sit down. I was like, "I'm still feeling like they're gonna move us from this table, right?" <laughs> we see Derek Johnson come. I said, "Marcus, that's the president." I've interviewed him on the red carpet multiple times, and his wife's coming. I was like, "Get up!" Full circle. We get up. Derek was like, hey, guys, we wanted to have you all at the at our table. I was like, 
they did this. What? Derek asked for you himself. Yes. His wife was like, Marcus, you remember? Marcus does not realize. Well, he didn't tell that time. He met the Tamika Johnson at the Superdome. When we went to the Rams game, I was down on the um, the field. Marcus was up in a suite and she went up to him and said, where's your wife, Angel? Mm. He didn't know who this woman was. She was like, oh, yeah, no, I send Derek all y'all's videos. I'll be like, let's do these challenges. Hilarious. I said, what is that? Marcus turned around and looked at me. He said, what the fuck? I said, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. We're sitting at the table with Roy Woods Jr. Roy Woods. That's his name. Mm -hmm. It ain't Roy Wood. Oh, it is. I, no, we're going to add that. That's today. Yo, we, that, hey, you, you ain't black if you don't. Yeah. We, you ain't it, black if you don't. It's always going to be If porous. an S need to go there, then the S is going. Brisha Webbs. Brisha's Webb. Roy Woods. Roy Woods. Junior. Junior's. And the president of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity the Incorporated dogs was and, there. His, and his wife. And I was like, well, we're going to have to be on our best behavior. I, and see, I sat at that table with Derek Johnson and them last year, and I hated every moment. <laughs> oh, no. Because I can't do what I normally do at the table because I want to make my jokes. I thought the same thing you did. I said, Nick, you know Derek is here. But then Tab was there, too. I think I think we were sitting with Tab and Derek Johnson. Uh -huh. I thought, oh, they may, must think we were Tab. Uh -huh. They said, no, we want you. You're uh -huh. from Baltimore, Kentucky. Uh, yes, they come did. Sit, <laughs> come sit with us. And that's a long ceremony. Uh -huh. But we had a good time. I enjoyed myself. Tell them what happened at your table, Josh. Didn't you? Have, did you something mean? interesting happen oh, at your so table? So we had people that uh, Kev requested to be at our table as well. <laughs> um, no, no, no. But uh, there were two extra spots next to Kev that I'm very grateful that Kev had put Imara and I at that table. Um, but there were some uh, unexpected guests at the table. Oh, um, I didn't get to hear none of this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was the, a time. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was it a time. It was a time. Oh, why come y'all not tell me about the time? And mind you, Angel, how I met unexpected guests, one of them was like, move your chair over. I was like, first of all, because I'm just, I'm also <laughs> like, I don't know who's with, at hmm. our table was basically Kev Liss and Kev's people, which was yeah. Imar and I, and then Nina Parker, and I recognized two of Two people on Nina's team, just from the TBS stuff and mm -hmm. uh, and the 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 party. But um, one of them I had been introduced to, that was new there, and then what like two two uh, women of God were <laughs> standing here right when we walked over to go say hi to you guys, uh -huh. and they were kind of like filling everything out, basically like. Uh, but I think they saw Mr. Fredericks's name there. Uh -huh. So they're like, oh, this must be Mr. Frederick's table. Uh -huh. So one of them sat by me as the thing starts, as the event starts, um, somebody tapped my shoulder and it was like one of the producers. He had like uh, or somebody, else, one of the PAs at least, he tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, side, side your uh, chair over. We're going to seat somebody else here. So in my head, I'm like, I'm a guest. Uh -huh. I don't know. But then everybody was kind of like. Oh, who are they? Who are they? I've looked at the list and she kind of gave me the look too of like, I, I don't know. Right. I don't know who this is. Right. And then they just start kind of being loud, getting on camera, getting on live, showing everybody at the table. I was like, oh, they don't know anybody. I was like, I know what they're, I know what they're doing. They're like, let me, let me get in, be having a good time. Let me fit in. Uh huh. And then at this time, Kevin, Nina are probably like 20 feet away by the, by the backstage door. And then I see um kind of need to start counting the seats because at this at this current <laughs> Nina, moment play. there is only one chair available that says kev's name on it nina doesn't have a seat so she's she's doing the head count and then i see her talking to somebody with the headset she was going like right. because the lady with the headset was basically like i don't know where you're gonna sit they said we're with nina's team i believe or we're nina's people and nina was like no they ain't i had never met them before in my life <laughs> So, um, at that point, the lady with the headset came back. She's like, you guys are going to come sit over here. So she just moved it. And then they just, let's get my stuff. Real quick. <laughs> that person, <laughs> two people. The funniest part. That oh, Josh, there was two people was two that people. she didn't know. There yes. was a table for eight. Right. Four people was me, Melissa, Josh, and, Mar, four. and Nina had no, Nina had three. Her and two people. Oh, okay. So she seven of the eight were taken. Okay. One seat was available. They took two. And that's why Nina had nowhere to sit. So when they sat down, they pulled a chair up from a, a neighboring table. The table and right creating a, they taking created a, Taking a seat from. Yes. Created a seat that wasn't there. And you know the place settings already yeah, have plates and stuff did. like that. So one of Nina's people is. Um, yeah. 
So they were like, well, who's not supposed to be here? And they, uh, the, the the other people were like, the, the girl told us. They were like, they went like to her. Oh, she's yeah. Like, she's because not supposed to be here. The people who the weren't lady, supposed to be here were like, pointed tried to the white girl. Like, <laughs> the lady tried, exactly. The lady tried to give everybody an opportunity. She's like, oh, can I see your tickets? And the first person they asked for tickets for me, I was like, mm-mm. First of all, because I know my tickets said <laughs> had General somebody City. else's name. <laughs> and it had somebody else's name. I was like, mm-mm. Kevin said. <laughs> right. And Liz, and go Liz get was, Greg. And this was just sitting there too, like I don't know if I can get us in trouble. So I was like, mm -mm. Kevin said, "There are two <coughs> more allotted seats here. We're with Kevin. One, yeah. two, three, four. Kevless. One, two. Imar and I. Three, four. I'm not moving. Right. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm not gonna do. <laughs> I'm like, not getting I'm not up. Doing that. And I already drank out of this up. water cup. So yeah, absolutely, man. I already sipped the champagne glass. This is the whole thing. <laughs> well, let me see your ticket, Kevin, my friend. He's he's up there. I was like, he said I'm I could not. be here, uh -uh. so Listen. I'll be here. Plus, my ticket says Lashandra, so that's <laughs> right. not gonna really help it my says kid. Kennedy Harris, <laughs> and I believe Kennedy would have sat here. So I'm her. Listen, you guys said I got the ring on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. But, Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. So they basically started going around with the tickets and then uh, was like, I'm a nominee of, of Nina's. I was like, okay, she's supposed to be with us then. Yeah. Um, but then they went to them and then they were just like, we don't. Yeah, they, they were like, get, the, get up. Well, listen, Denora's I don't know what tickets was, they had or not either though. Denora, when she came down after doing the voice of God, she went back to the table that they told was hers, that she was supposed to sit at. Not only did the people take her seat, they took her food. Oh no! They said, oh, this don't is, get me started about the food. They said this is for our client, and now they're on the opposite. They're like far away. They're to the right of me, and the Holy uh, Spirit says something is awry. I can see the back of Angel's I, like there's been an awakening. In uh huh. The I can see the back of my two sorors just standing there, and I was like, why is my friend standing? So I got up from the table. I walked over. I said, what's going on here? And Janor was like, they've taken my seat, and they said this is for my client, and I said, oh. Well, we have an extra seat at the president's table. Mm -hmm. nobody, I said, nobody is sitting beside Roy. At the president's table. And Marquita was like, oh, nobody's sitting there? I said, no. She said, well, there we have it. And I said, come on. And you daintily walked. I did. And I said, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, this is Denora Walcott. She was the voice of God at the beginning of the ceremony. Someone unfortunately took her seat. So if you don't mind, I'm going to have her join the table. And you they better know it. They said, oh, you did a phenomenal job. Mm. She said, oh, I like your seat way better. I said, look at hey! that. Look at that. What the devil meant for bad? Return God meant it for my good. Tenfold. But anyways, it was great. They didn't announce one of my categories, but they're sending me the certificate. They you know forgot. what Melissa was, said? They didn't announce mine last it. year either. Ah. But I got one for the book got nominated. Because oh. I was like, they, I'm asking the people, like, where's Outstanding Social Media? Because they didn't have any of them. Yeah. And Melissa was like, they didn't announce that last year either. Yeah. We didn't even get the certificate. Uh, well, I have our certificate. I'm going to get it framed so it can go up somewhere up in here. Mm, got to put it in here. Yeah. And probably. then we went to Angel's party. Let me tell y'all what. Angel <laughs> and her family came in. That was Angel's family's party. Yes. But yes. the boy, they had a family entrance, Angel and her immediate family, <laughs> nuclear. Yeah. When I tell you these four boys walked in, Marcus, Kai, Sai, and Amar. Kai Tanksley said, none of you hold a candle to me. Not in my family. No one in this room. Correct. Commands the attention. That baby, yeah. not only did he, he walked in line, but he was just a hair above the line. They had Period. those vests on too. Yeah, they had the vest. They had the jackets. He found the camera. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Once the eyebrows came up, I was like, "Oh, yeah. Angel's gonna." Side did his little eyes. Yeah. Amar was like, "He hated all As a all Republican, of you. I feel like this is <laughs> this is a waste. He of was that. trying to burn you all like Carrie did in the movie. <laughs> uh, Amar was like, "I don't want to be here. No one should be here. Right. This is a waste of campaign financing. <laughs> yes. And I'm only here because I can't control my movements, and people can pick me up." If people couldn't pick me up and place me places, I wouldn't be there. Marcus, little Marcus is the sweetest pie. He was just like, I'm but just Kai this. is the moment. No, you have no idea, but y'all didn't get to see this when I was like, okay, because my girlfriend Daisia was the one. We weren't going to do no entrance. My girlfriend Daisia, who flew in from Atlanta, she said, I see an entrance. <laughs> I want you all to do an entrance. I said, okay, Daisy. She said, it has to happen. It didn't happen the way she asked for it to happen, but we did something. I said, okay, y'all going to walk in. I was like, I need to see all the wrists. Before they even got to the, the entrance to walk in, this is Kai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Swear to God. There's so many things I'm leaving in the past. One, I am leaving having to deal with other people's problems with me. I'm going to let them have that problem. And I'm going to live my best life. I'm leaving quite a few 
bad habits in the past. I don't want them. So the new year is the perfect time to move on from things that just aren't working in your life. With Next Evo Natural CBD products, oil-based CBD can be one of them. Oil-based CBD doesn't mix well with our oil-based, water-based bodies, excuse me. So you absorb as low as 6% of the CBD on the label. Next Evo Naturals developed a clinically tested water soluble form of CBD and their gummies and capsules are proven to work faster and absorb four times better than oil based products. Go to nextevo.com and use code SK for 25% off any order or up to 60% off as a new subscriber. We use Next Evo Naturals in our house. My husband loves to use their, um, Supplement that aids in sleep because he has a lot of issues just being able to wind down and get to rest. He takes the capsules and that baby is knocked out within 20 minutes. I like to use their de-stressors because I have a lot of things on my plate and I sometimes get myself worked up a little bit. That doesn't help me get through the day. (laughs) So I love to use their um, their de-stressors to be able to still focus but not have all the like Built up tension um, that sometimes can follow me throughout the day. Get more out of your CBD with Next Evo. Try their strongest gummy ever, their new extra strength daily wellness CBD gummies, which customers love, or try the all time bestseller, their stress and sleep CBD complex products. Find new ways to use CBD with a variety of convenient options, including gummies, which I love, capsules, and dissolvable powders. Trust the brand with data. Their products are proven to absorb four times better than most oil-based products, and they work fast with absorption starting in just 10 minutes. And their label contents are 100% guaranteed. So what you see is what you get. Um, And they are the only brand that has conducted human clinical studies to test the value of their products. Leave oil behind and start the new year. Start the year with more effective and fast-acting CBD from Next Evo Naturals. Get 25% off any order or up to 60% off as a new subscriber by using code SK. At nextevo.com. That's 25% off your order or up to 60% off a new subscription at nextevo.com with promo code SK. Okay. I am not, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. Arms open, doing this, hitting his chest. I was like, it pisses Marcus off when he's like that. It feeds my soul. Mm. I only want to encourage this cockiness that's not backed up by anything. I love it. Listen, that's one of the that's one of the things that unfortunately males get to do sometimes. And he's the one of my children that I'm like, do it anyways. The party was great. My people sweated. You know, you all had your very classy nomination party. We sat at tables with beautiful floral arrangements. Mm-hmm. There were balloons cascading above our heads. There was there was a, a full dinner. Full dinner. Plated. Plated. How how dessert, the dessert. how the luncheon was supposed to be according yes. to the menu. <laughs> yes, it's a dessert, tier dessert the table. Yeah, there was everything there. I told the party planner, I am not them. Angel said, "We got chicken and waffles outside. Yeah, I said, get them fries and that chicken." <laughs> The chicken and waffle people didn't even bring the waffles. No, so. they said we just uh-uh. got for I didn't. I said, oh, there's no waffle. We just got. The but fries. let me tell you what. When fried chicken is fried good, oh, your man. mind don't need nothing. I said, first of all, y'all niggas didn't made, made these wings right. Didn't they though? They had all the, Josh had honey. He had honey, honey sriracha, sriracha glaze. Man. I knew if I would have finished that, that would have put me in a coma. I but didn't know they had that uh, glaze. I had three of them. I, boy, I was, I, listen, this is why we can be poor again. Because niggas can go from a plate at dinner at my party to chicken and fries. Yes. And either, either time, I'm happy. We had a good time. I was not hungry at the end. Yeah, that's And I good. like chicken. I you know I like some fried Listen, chicken. Fried chicken. That DJ played the most ratchet music with oh, my mama perfect. there. He was perfect. Your yes. mom's wig. Come Woo. on. Beyonce cascading down. She you said, hear me? Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into her when I was going to the bathroom. She was coming from that area. She said, Kevin, look, now look, I went and, I went and got, me, got me a new wig. <laughs> she was caressing her dresses. She was moving it out her fast. Said, you better wear it, Mama Dorothy. Listen. She is the best. She is, I mean, she had, a, she danced. My mother-in-law ended up in a Delta stroll. I said, how does this happen? The Deltas were strolling. She was trying to get back to her seat. <laughs> And so she's in the she's at the end of the line. Victory was like we were learning a stroll, and she said all of a sudden she said I'm she's trying to learn and she's like, and your she mom. Like, this is Victory first. She's strolling, then they're like part where they turn around. She looks. Marcus's mom <laughs> is in the stroll just. 
She's honorary? <laughs> no. She said I was just trying to get back to my seat. <laughs> I said, what? You can't do that stuff and if you're not in there like, with the people. She said, I was just had my chicken. I was just trying to get back to my seat. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She just, <laughs> that's all life. I thought it was tell. a soul train line. <laughs> she said, I'm here for it. But we danced. The DJ played the ratchet music. It was a great time. It was just perfect because I was just like, I just want to party. That's really all I wanted to do. I made sure I said, listen, friend, because I knew he was tired. I had just did a McDonald's. I just hosted a McDonald's event right before I came. Angel, I don't know how you do the stuff. And I'm a doer of stuff. Doer of stuff. But you did three things yeah, in, did. in sequence. In sequence with no cushion time in between. Literally, we pulled up to the soundstage at 730. I had to change my clothes at the sound stage. Put the kids in their clothes. Dog, the let me tell stage. you this. Let me tell you why me and Angel transcend just coworkerness and blend into familial cousin <laughs> cousinry. I go into my office to put my back down. All over my couch is children's clothes. Oh, yeah. Angel said, "We gonna get all that. Don't worry." <laughs> <laughs> I see tiny pajamas and stuff. And it always reminds me when you go to somebody's house at the cookout, there's always a room where either yes. children's clothes or there's babies in there sleeping. You're like, oh, I didn't know. There's a designated baby sleeping yes. area. Yes. All their little pajamas. As soon as I opened the door, Angel came and don't worry about it. We're going to get all <laughs> said, that. We're going to get all that. I said, Angel, up. I'm just putting my bag down. I'm not going to be in here. Just so you know, we just had the kids get dressed in here. <laughs> I'm going to get it all up. I promise you. I said, Kevin, I know you're tired. I said, listen, I just need a picture with you before you leave. And also, the kids, it was uh, it was uh, Angel's kids, Denora's kids, Denora's kids, Mail Quinn's and daughter, kids. and McKinley. McKinley just oldest, and Keon's oldest. Mm -hmm. They was in the conference room at the soundstage having a board meeting. Yes, Brendan sent me a picture, mm -hmm. and the kids were so little. Table looks like it's made for giants. Yes. Cause they're like little bodies That's up there. They, table. So McKinley come out. I said, "What y'all doing?" She said, "Well, we're having a meeting." Yeah. I said, "What are y'all meeting about?" Well, Kai has my password to my iPad, <laughs> <laughs> and I he was checking my text. I, I said, "This is just for the girls' chat." I said, "Y'all is growing up. This is black cousins who ain't related." Correct. They don't know they're not cousins for real. They're gonna find out at their high school graduation. Yes. Like this is my cousin. How y'all related? I, they, they told me they were my cousins. I don't know. This is what I it don't is. go down the family tree. They told me that was my cousin. My mom's friends' <laughs> kids is my cousins in black families. If I call her Auntie Angel, then what does that make her children to me? Who goes and asks their aunts, uncles, how is we aunt and uncles? The, po <laughs> the people told me to tell you, call you that, so I call you that. Listen, I didn't find out some of the people who I thought was related to me weren't until well into my teens. Yeah, I said, "Isn't that my cousin for real?" Like, nah, no, we just hush, man. That's <laughs> this, your cousin. This is your cousin. I call Ben my cousin. I call his mom Aunt Cobby and Uncle Rudy. That's your cousin. Nobody bothered to tell me that that's just Grandma Ruth's friend. Yeah, no, no, that's cousin. Because you don't need to know that. You don't because that's not important. <laughs> Kai asked me the next day, "So is McKinley's mama the president of Amazon?" <laughs> and I said, "No." He said. I knew she was lying. I knew she was lying. What? <laughs> he said, is McKinley's mama the president of Amazon? I said, now she used to be real high up at Netflix though. Let he was like, she was lying. We was going to Tab's birthday party and Tab, we think, I don't know if it's true, but we thought she bought her house from the owner of the Lakers, Jeannie Buss, right? So we were telling Joe on the way. It is true, okay, the, the it, son. Okay, mm -hmm. so Josiah heard that Tab of the Brown owns the Lakers. And did. And in his mind, he was like, wow, I knew she did a lot of stuff. She also, <laughs> also owns the Lakers. And the funny part is, it wasn't in his mind that it was impossible. Mm -hmm. He was just like, how does she do all the stuff and she also owns the Lakers? That's a, and that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a like, big why deal. does nobody talk about it? I said, boy, no, the person who owned the house they own the Lakers. So she doesn't own the Lakers? Because he was like, I thought we would have gotten more tickets. Oh, exactly. If Why are aren't we at the game right now? And I told Tab, she was like, now nah, he done spoken to my future. Now when yeah. I eventually own the Lakers, Jojo done called it. That's why they took that picture from her party. Yeah. Because Tab was like, Joe was like, dang, well, 
Shout out my nigga Gucci. <laughs> shout, out, shout out my nigga Gucci. Listen, at, a, at that McDonald's thing, this woman came up to me all excited, black lady. She was like, let me, give me your social media handle because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this and I want to tag you. And I said, okay. So I give it to her. She said, my name is, you know, I don't hold names like that. She said, hmm. uh, I am the, um, the largest black uh, owning suites at the SoFi Stadium. Oh, dang. She owns more suites than any, I guess, other black person. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, she said, I'm thinking about doing something like this at SoFi. I said, well, then I suppose you're going to have me host, of, co of course. Of course. She was like, yeah, I'm going to speak to your people. You do that. <laughs> Put me up in the suite at SoFi. I'll help these people play spades. I was literally host. <laughs> Kevin, I literally was playing spades. I had the mic in between my legs like this, between my thighs. Literally going like, all right, how how many we going this time? Oh, y'all gonna get set. I'm literally hosting and playing. And space. playing. I said, listen, McDonald's you, hey, was gonna get that. If a check's gonna be break. written, Angel gonna cash it. Huh? I be hosted. tired later. Huh? Marcus is like, are we getting ready to go? When listen, we gonna get this money, and that's when we gonna go. Angel did all that stuff, then came to the club last night. She was texting me like, I'm gonna be at the show. I said, Angel, sit down. The show started at eight o'clock. I do my jokes up top. Yeah, you do. Angel came. Tony Baker was the last comedian. Yeah. Tony's on stage for five of his 12 minutes. Here come Angel and Marcus. Excuse me. Yeah, it's a, it was 930. I said, Angel. I said, I told y'all. Yeah, you did, but you didn't have to come. I, I wonder if this was your first Kev on stage of Friends and Flappers. And I said, I'm coming to support my friends. I would have been can. there earlier, but I had to make sure I spent time with the people who had flew in to see That's us. That's why I told, I said, Angel, I'm going. I'm doing it next month. I'll be back. You I'm know, not this coming. is the first one. <laughs> I'm not coming next also, month. Also, shout out Gigi LaFlair. First oh, rising star good, came. Really good set. She had a monster set. I was so proud of her, so nervous for her. Cause she was like, oh my God, I'm in LA. I said, girl, 200 people is just 200 people. Mm -hmm. Like you as a comedian, if you perform in front of 200 people in South Carolina or Dallas, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? LA, the people are there. They're just, they're just ticket buyers. Yeah. But in their mind, people's minds like, oh, it's LA. LA. And then you gave that to her. And she and, ain't, but listen, she, and she killed delivered. it. That's right. so good. That's so good. Yes, I did the baby shower this weekend too, honey. And you weekend. did Brisha's web. <sighs> Let me her little you. baby shower for that little sweet little lamb. Little lamb. I'm trying to eat better, and I know it has to be easy, and that is the reason why I like Factor. The reason why it has to be easy, because I ain't got time with a whole bunch of foolishness, with a whole bunch of prep, with a whole bunch of cleanup. And Factor is always fresh, okay? Never frozen meals that are chef-crafted and dietitian approved and are ready in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from each week from Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you find and fuel up feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. First of all, they're two-minute meals, okay? So you can fuel up fast with Factors restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. There's no prep. There's no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so you're, there's no prepping, cooking, or cleaning up if uh, is needed. You don't need to do any of that. Flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required. Sign up and save. They've done the math. Factor is less experience, expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash SK50 and use code SK50 to get 50% off. That's code SK50 at factormeals.com slash SK50 to get 50% off. And we thank Factor for sponsoring today's podcast. All right, now we want to talk about Wendy documentary, full transparency. Angel wasn't able to watch any, as you can see how busy her weekend was. Mm -hmm. I watched two in a possible episode. Melissa watched all four. Oh, no, no, she watched three and some change. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to have <clears throat> seen the whole documentary in order to have the opinion if you, uh, that I have, at least. <clears throat> now, if you're unfamiliar, <clears throat> the documentary is called Where's Wendy? Where's Wendy Williams? Uh huh. And it's basically detailing what has happened to her kind of post the cancellation of the Wendy Williams show mm -hmm. and COVID. 
and the divorce of uh, Kevin Hunter, I believe is her ex-husband's name. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what. Whew. Is that what it gave you? Angel, Ooh. you want to talk about a sad state of affairs. Mm -hmm. Now, Wendy's, the, the, the precipice of the documentary is we're trying to get Wendy back healthy so she can either get back on TV or get back on a podcast, right? Let me tell you the first thing I noticed. And they later on tell you that she has dementia. But the first thing that I noticed, I said, Wendy Williams is not healthy. Okay. That's if, the first thing you know. So what happened was she, she early in the documentary, they're like, she's like, Wells Fargo took my money. And then they put the like graphics on and was like, some years ago, I don't remember the exact year, some years ago, um, Wells Fargo's noticed, Wells Fargo was hosting, hold, holding her money, uh, not holding it, but like she banks with them. Mm -hmm. And Wells Fargo's basically like paraphrasing, there's a lot of unusual transactions with your account. We feel like people might be taking advantage of you. We going to hand this over to the court and let y'all figure it out. Mm -hmm. The court decides nobody in her. I need, I need a napkin. There's like, I think it's not, I'm not sure. It's either snot or sweat, but it's under your nose and I don't want it to stay there. There you go, <laughs> there you go friend. Cause I'm listening intently. And then the little glistening under your nose was like, mm -hmm. and Wells Fargo, it was echoing you. Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo, <laughs> the court court. <laughs> Wendy Wendy <laughs> I was like if you don't hush Wendy Wendy <laughs> It was a booger So Wells Fargo put her under a guardianship Now what I thought was interesting is In this graphics I didn't know this uh -huh. But the, the uh, graphics were like Most of the time people who are under guardianship That is placed with a Like it's under family control Somebody in your family is the first choice yeah. To be the guardian over your finances mm -hmm. In this case In her case Wells Fargo appointed a independent guardian over her finances. Oh, no. Yes. When you watch the documentary, you be like, okay, I see why y'all did that. Her manager, who is handling a person who consumes a lot of alcohol. This is a dude, right? The man. I saw the clip of him. This is a man. Uh huh. She has lymphedema, I believe. So her feet are in bad shape. She says she can only feel 2% of her feet. But her cognitive ability doesn't seem to be lucid. She's not lucid. She's 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 it's dementia. They they it is it's if you know about dementia and Alzheimer's and like deteriorating the frontal lobes, you have behavioral, you know, you can go from laughing to crying. They're very erratic. Very erratic. You can go from calm to yelling, all that stuff. And <laughs> she did that. So mm -hmm. at first I they don't tell you that at the beginning of the documentary. Mm -hmm. which I feel like you should. Mm -hmm. But as a watcher and, you know, you, you have old, older family members. I worked in some old folks' homes. Like my my mother-in-law works with p patients who have dementia. You can recognize a lot of the similarities in those traits, mm -hmm. right? So I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, somebody in Patreon, Krista says she's there, but she's very far away. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, she has lymphedema, dementia, and aphasia. I don't know what aphasia is. I'm looking up. But so she's like barking at her uh, assistant, yelling, then crying. She's like drinking a lot of alcohol, even even now. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm thinking if you're her manager or on her team, why? Wh what are y'all like? Be for real. Like he's trying to set her up to do a podcast. Even outside of uh, dementia, her her physical health. Go ahead. Aphasia is a communication disorder that affects a person's ability to understand or express speech, write, uh, read, or write. Mm. It's usually caused by brain damage, often <clears throat> from a stroke or head injury. Got it. So her physical health with just lymphedema, she can't. She's not as mobile as she would like. Mm -hmm. And then you have her cognitive health to be on TV. Y'all, she's not healthy enough to be on There's TV. There's no way. To be on a podcast. There's no way. If you care about her for real, you would be trying to care about her for real. Mm. You wouldn't be, they having meetings about podcasts and I'm sitting in my bed like, podcasts? That what must be his only client. If that, that feels like, like a little bit, now mind you, I haven't watched anything. This is my judgment based off of what my brother's telling me right mm. now. That feels a little bit like desperation. Like, I got to keep this cow making milk and or I don't get to drink. 
that's what I was feeling about. She has an assistant who was getting yelled at. She had a publicist who was there. And in my mind, a publicist usually is there if you're, I mean, if you're a big star, you, a lot of them can carry a publicist on retainer. Mm -hmm. But most people carry a publicist when they have something to promote in cycles, yeah. right? Now, Beyonce, people like that, and even Wendy Williams, as big as she is, they'll have a publicist all the time mm -hmm. to put out fires, to, you know, organize yeah. interviews and all that type of stuff. But for the majority of the last two or three years, Wendy's been largely out of the public eye. Truly, truly. And her pu if <clears throat> her publicist should be doing nothing more than being like, in, in my eyes, you got to get better. Let's work on Wendy the per the human person yeah. before we worry about Wendy the talent and trying to get her out there. It gave me like, y'all shouldn't be doing this. Then I'm gonna tell you something that pissed me off. Quick aside, go ahead. You but yeah, what I was gonna say is, but that's because you are seeing these as people who should care, but these are employees. These are business folk that yeah. are there to be paid to do a job. You would hope, I think, because especially because you have worked as a person that always employs your friends, mm -hmm. that employs your family. So the two go hand in hand. But a lot of times in business. People are like, if I'm not here to do this certain job, I ain't really here That's at true. all. But go ahead, continue. I'm not saying to make it right, but I'm saying. No, you're right. And uh, somebody on Patreon said, Arnell said they had an earpiece on Bruce Willis to recite lines in his last few movies. And I heard that too, because he, I believe he has dementia as well. Yeah. And they had him, they had him, I was reading an article about this. They had him shooting, shooting out his scenes before lunch, which is usually less than four hours of actual shooting time. Right. Because the set don't really start until... You can't start shooting until the set's built. Mm -hmm. And that usually takes two hours, right? Anyway, I want to make a quick aside about dementia. Cause they oh, he has a facial as well. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah, he has a, he has a facial. I'm sorry. My bad. Um <clears throat> a lot of clips were going viral. And I realize I be frustrated on the internet a lot of times, but I do realize sometimes my frustration, I'm frustrated or about to argue with one to prevent myself from arguing with somebody who really doesn't understand what they be saying. So Wendy Williams is barking at her, like yelling at her assistant in one of these clips that, that's on uh, Twitter. And this person was like, dementia aside, she should be nicer to her assistant. <clears throat> and in my head, I said, do you, do you realize saying dementia aside, she, be, she should be nicer is like saying paralysis aside, they should be able to walk. Correct. Asthma aside, they should do this marathon yes. with no med. Like you can't dementia aside behavioral things even people who were nice in life mm -hmm. when they have dementia they be lashed they first a lot of times they don't know who they're talking to absolutely not. they can't place them and they, they the part of the brain that relegates like social cues and those type of things it deteriorates so they bark out and yell like you work with people who have dementia or family members they will make you feel like they never knew you listen my grandmother my mother's mother she had dementia and there's also a hard like it's hard for them to differentiate reality from what uh mm -hmm. from what they've made up in their head like my grandmother was swearing somebody was stealing her clothes out of uh, mm -hmm. her drawer. don't nobody want your church slips don't nobody want your girdles yeah. but in her mind somebody was taking her stuff and she was adamant like the conviction in which she was getting pissed off yeah. at about this was not something that you could easily be like this is not what's this is not what's happening. Because it's real to her. It is very real. And there there was nothing in her mind that was working to tell her what you think is actually something you just made up. Yeah. And so the same thing, the clip that I watched of her trying to get them to get some blue stuff out of the uh out of the like um drugstore. Not drugstore, but like one of them like little uh bodegas or whatever. Yeah. She had sent her in there and she was like, This is not the right place. We've never and the driver had to be like this is the same place she's been coming to for years. Mm -hmm. And in her mind, she was just like, y'all are lying to me yeah. fully. And and they have that. And sometimes they get physical. Smoke shop. Thank you. Uh, they, they will hit you and stuff. Like, it can be serious. And the son was on there. Her her son, Kevin Jr., uh, the, the documentary was making the point of why he's not the, docu the guardian. Uh -huh. And they were saying he, it was somewhere like he was spending like... Uh, 100k a year on uber either uber eats or uber rides and he was he was 
uh, using her credit card Burn like her money. crazy amounts of like, I think it was Uber Eats, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But I believe it was like $100,000 a year on Uber Eats and rides. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Uber Eats person. There's not enough food on that app for I one don't, person alone. You, you couldn't be, you would have to be eating every meal from from the finest of fine dining places with a substantial tip and I can't see how you could be feeding one person to spend a hundred thousand dollars on Uber Eats. And I again I order Uber Eats a lot. Mm -hmm. I am not touching a hundred thousand dollars. And I order often in a, year? For, in a year, no. Even for my family, we order Uber Eats for production. That's it was like three hundred dollars a a day. If you break the math down, it was like $300 a day in Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the weekend, sometimes I go crazy. I had Princess Pizza this weekend. I might spend $100, $200 in a weekend, maybe even a day. But then I feel bad about myself. I go back to eating cereal and make a pita. But you know what I'm saying? Like you recalibrate. But he was also saying in the documentary, and I thought this was interesting, two things. One, he was saying that when he was young, his mom wasn't around and her answer always was money. So, and then two, I think his whole life, Wendy Williams has probably been w rich and also living lavishly. Like her house doesn't look like she has fine stuff everywhere. So I was wondering, and this is just me speculating. I, you know, this is just me watching as a consumer. I was wondering if this is kind of like, well, shoot, you wasn't there for me when I was a kid. All I had was money. So I'm used to this. Yeah. And two, if I don't want to see what is happening in front of me. Mm hmm you know what I mean? Because her family was like, a lot of them hadn't spoken to her in years and stuff. Yeah. It wasn't like, I felt bad because it wasn't like a, uh, and I'm not even saying this to be funny, but like a, there wasn't people are putting her arms around her that cared about her regardless of what she could do for them, even in this state. Yeah. And that's the worst part about this life or fame. A lot of times, like you were saying, you get around people who don't care about you outside of the job the that check. you yeah the job that you provide the opportunity that you provide and um i don't know if these people I, I don't know them i haven't watched it i don't know if any of these people just don't care or if they do care they just don't know what to do in this circumstance because even though she is not in right her right mind she's still kind of their boss yeah. and not knowing how to go against what she's saying, even though they can clearly see that what she's saying is not correct. Absolutely. And it could be a mixture of both. It doesn't have to be black or white. Um, but it is unfortunate that there aren't people who aren't on payroll that are able to be by her side. You yes. know what I'm saying? Listen, people in other cases have taken money from people that they knew were doing bad stuff. Mm hmm because your bad behavior pays my bills. Yeah. So I'm not going not going to get a job. Listen, one of the things I hate about working theaters, here's the thing, Ball Brothers. A lot of them are union, like they're not all. They're all union and you have to hire a certain amount of people and because our shows are very low-fi for a theater show, like once here's the thing is set up, it's set. Yeah. Like there's no and Ball Brothers like we are comedians. We yeah. don't have a lot of moving parts. We're not Just musicians. Yeah, we need the mic. If the mic is on, you know. The show can happen. So people sit there and they be on their phones getting paid full price. They're never going to be like, you know what? I ain't really doing nothing on this show. You ain't even got to pay me the full rate. Yeah. People going to take your money. Correct. And pay their bills. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't have uh, people who like, and I'm grateful. Listen, Melissa, is, as long as I have her. You got I protection. Know. I if I was losing my health, mm -hmm. she gonna be like, all right, <laughs> wrap it up. My baby's sick. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. We yeah. got money saved. Get him on a blanket. Get him some anime. Get him some FIFA. I've been paying the same FIFA twenty twenty one since twenty twenty one. Let that baby rest. And it'd be, it's, it, it's easier to move along knowing that you have people. It ain't, get, ain't got to be a lot, but you got to have three or four people who care about you, the person. And that ain't even it. Like my kids, my my parents, you know what I'm saying? My sister. Mm -hmm. 
My brother, he probably would be the same. I want to shut He's not going to be able to do it. <laughs> he ain't going, but I want you to think. And my but, brother worked for me. And he what? was like, no, this deal is wrong. Or what, you know what I'm saying? Like he yeah. would turn down bread if he didn't think it was right. Right. Listen, at our party on Sunday, there were, I can count on both hands how many people were there that I actually have a connection to making money with or paying money to. So I would say maybe there was eight of you all, maybe probably, I think probably seven. Mm -hmm. The rest of those almost a hundred people are people that love me for me. Mm -hmm. And not to say that the people I make money with don't. No, they don't. They don't. Uh, <laughs> he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Angel, either you tell these jokes or get the <laughs> out of here. But it's just like, if you're noticing that there's a circle of people that, uh, this is why I always, me and you are definitely friends, but I always am very, very adamant about mentioning which is which. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't and one falls off, yeah, I, I want you to understand that both the relationships are separate unless, unless something about one of the other relationships is informing me about the other. Meaning, Absolutely. if you a shysty ass person, they're letting me know how you are going to be as my boss. Usually our shysty, you are usually who you are <clears throat> in all the places you show up as. Very true. I forget to tell people stuff at work. I forget to tell people stuff in my relationship. Who's getting paid on tour? <laughs> Let's get to the point. People are like, don't, it's a great don't, surprise, though. Don't even tell Kevin. Listen, don't even, if he ain't, don't if don't come and talk to me. There was so much confusion at one point in time with this tour. <laughs> I had to go back. I was like, am I losing my mind? Mm -hmm. I had to go back to a text that you agree. You said yes. This is exactly what we're doing. And I was like, see, this is why I am confusion. But no, yeah. I have worked for shysty ass people. Mm -hmm. I think and, we all. Uh, we all have. I, we, I think we all have. But At least this, us in, this in this in this industry, for sure. I yeah. have worked, and I can work for a shiesty ass person, but I cannot be friends with. And them. I gotta Back. trust them. You gotta That's, keep them at it. I'm gonna up. keep you right here where you at. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure the paperwork is right, so that if your shiesty ass tries to do something, my paperwork is gonna make sure. Absolutely. What's supposed to be mine is supposed to be mine. So Wendy feels like she doesn't have any relationships that she established strong connections to to people who would be there when she's down and out. Absolutely. I do want to make this point. Taryn brought this up and I think this is important. She said, it's also clear that her son wasn't enabling her. He wasn't allowing her to smoke and drink. She got worse when she went back to New York. That's true. She went from Miami, I'm sorry, New York to Miami to be with her son. And her niece also, Brianne says, her niece seems to be the only one trying to protect her. I agree. I was, the, the son was connected to the part of the guardianship. But I believe that he's also very young, 22, yeah, so 23. So he doesn't have any type of money management skills. I think he's just used to being the child of a rich person. You're not really thinking about what you're spending. Absolutely. Because the money was also, when he was getting cashed out when she had that TV show, she had a radio, like she was a big star. So that might have been the norm for him. It just makes sense why that person can't be in charge of your finances. My mother loves me, would take a bullet for me. But if she had to be the a guardian over my finances, we're wiped out after about <laughs> three months. Because she's not going to spare no expense when it comes to taking care of her baby when it's just like, but we have to budget. It. Absolutely. That's Listen, my children, I love them. They, they are used to ordering Postmates. Mm -hmm. part, of, part of our lifestyle, we don't be able to cook. I don't cook. I really <laughs> never have. I While barbecue. I'm on tour, I don't cook. Listen, either. so my boys, they can pretty much, and then I, I thank God they are very respectable. They just eat a lot. Mm -hmm. But they eat a lot, whether it was in the house, they just consume a lot of food. Correct. Isaiah, don't, don't, he eats a lot too. Joe is just eating cardboard. Mm -hmm. He's just eating great. I see him pour the dog food. I'll be like, what kind of gravy is like, Hey Joe, we got plenty of stuff. <laughs> we got food. So I'm not blaming him. I'm saying he probably is just used to a lifestyle, but I can see why the court was like, okay, you can't be in charge of the money. Uh, anyway, I was all, I felt really bad for her. And the thing I want to say, and we got to close. A lot of people were like, well, this is karma. This is karma. This is karma. Let me tell you what I want to say about this. Now, Wendy Williams said a lot of stuff. She heard a lot of people. A lot of horrible her. things. She heard Very a lot much of people. So. But let me tell you what. Ronald Reagan, Henry Kissinger, these people be responsible for hundreds of thousands of destruction in people's lives. Worse people than Wendy Williams live long, healthy lives. They're rich the whole time. We don't never say karma to Henry Kissinger who did unspeakable acts because they block off the karma the founding fathers they be like them niggas lived outside of hamilton 
long lives. Lo- uh, took advantage years. of people no. and died at 98. And they lived that long. They was they was plus seventy for sure. Really? 70, yes. Okay, I didn't think we that. were. Sorry. Wendy Williams gets all the karma in the world, mm-hmm. but people who've done far worse than her. I'm talking about responsible for literal murder. Wendy Williams did her dirt. She no. definitely did. But the if that's karma, then where is the karma for these other people? Listen. Where is the karma for these other people who were responsible for the Kevin. deaths of prison industrial complex people who profit off of black people's lives? People who the private prison industry, the judges who make people uh, who get kickbacks from the prison, they be healthy forever. You make a good point, Kev. Shoot, I'm but- done with this. <laughs> now we'll see y'all uh, next week. This was actually a bonus episode. This was an old bonus episode. If you're watching this and you're not part of the Patreon, we have a very busy week this week. I'm on uh, shooting TBS this week, so we're not able to shoot a main. Uh, we'll figure out the bonus for people who are on Patreon next Well, n- next week as I speak into the microphone now. But as you are hearing it, uh, the bonus we'll figure it out because I don't. Are we on tour that weekend? Not the weekend of the yeah. 15th. But we're on tour next week. Uh, the, the, week the end of the week of this TV show, we yes, are on tour. We are on tour the 9th and the 10th. We have Dallas and Houston. Houston and Dallas, the opposite All way. All right, it's going to be tough. But we're going to figure it we're out. We're going to figure it out. This tour, and this is why next time we do, here's the thing, we're going to be doing what are called spot dates. I like that. Spot dates is like this week, we're going to Chicago. We are coming back. Yeah, I like that. That's Go what to the, Dallas and Houston, 85 South. They, and the, what the, well, no, they did a little tour, but that tour was small. Yeah, the, it ain't got the, to the, be. No, the dead ass people. Oh, yeah. yeah. They did five cities. And done. And done. And, and there, first of all, Production. The production on that podcast is astounding, immaculate. I yeah. wish we I could go. I'm, I'm sure they'll post the live one on Patreon. So I'm. All right, we love y'all. Bye. Bye. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Fire. Uh, uh, uh. Here's another thing of fire. Uh, with my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.